Nagaishimas. Welcome to Cliff's Wujo. A Wujo is a place where the Wujo arts are practiced, as a dojo is a place in which the martial arts are practiced. The Wu arts are all things not allowed in mainstream media. Wu is all talk, not fit for polite discussion. Wu is the other half of what makes us human. Good morning. Today is March 29th at 7.50 a.m. Um, today's uh, discussion is actually a little bit of a, a wander. A uh, wander off towards a life of unknowing and how we have to be aware of this as we move forward. The things are really shifting around us. This is something I've sort of sussed out in the... Uh, looking at all the release language as we've got some of the spiders running again and we're doing some of the uh, concurrency spiders which actually map the... Language coming out of the uh, MSM, the mainstream media, against the language that we had forecast some time back. And currently I'm running against a um, Shape of Things to Come set, which is out of um, uh, 10 and 11. <coughs> Shape of Things uh, 10 and 11. And uh, so we're running those concurrency spiders, and I started noticing uh, certain waves that were forming within the uh, release language that we were picking up, which led directly to this sort of little thinking about it. And here's what I've here's what I've come up with. Um, we're actually in a period of major transition. It's a really weird transition because it is not a. Uh, it's a manifestation. I mean, uh, I'm going to be clear about that. Universe is in fact manifesting stuff for us, but in a larger. Um, view of the forest kind of thinking, it's not so much uh, the. Uh, occurrence of an event so much as the occurrence of a breakdown and or, or a separation. And what's actually going on is that, uh, especially here in the West Western world, uh, we've and but but pretty much throughout every part of humanity that is not in a uh, tribal, uh, heavily tribally influenced culture, we are trained from birth to this little hierarchical model of how things are supposed to operate. And basically, you'll note that your entire experience from, uh, if you're in Western world, and that's that's mainly who I'm speaking to at the moment, of um, uh, your ed- of your schooling uh, from your uh, kindergarten all the way up through uh, whatever level you attain, is basically a method for uh, assigning you a position within the hierarchical pyramidal structure, which has the evil, rotten, nasty bastards on top, and basically the rest of us all the way down at the bottom supporting them. And, and this training from birth to the hierarchical model is done at a very interesting level. It's not like they get out there with whips when you're a little kid and force you to do these kind of things. They work on your mind. And the way they do it is uh, very interesting as well, because I've discovered that what they've done is basically to inculcate into our uh, mental constructs, into your worldview, my worldview, uh, especially if you're male and especially if you've ever done any kind of team sports or been part of any sort of very heavily um, hierarchical organization, military, you know, IBM, this kind of thing. They put in there a uh, nascent... um, uh, hole in your in your brain really uh, that will be filled by the presence of quote the leader and the way they do this is to build within you a natural expectation that those at the top are better than you a further natural expectation if all this is built into the language and if you really want to go into it you can examine it um, then they also build in an expectation that uh, the further up you go in the chain of command, the more right they are. Now, they support this, the they, the powers that be, support this in a number of ways, both with religious authority, trying to um, usurp the uh, parental authority, and, you know, that's why the Pope is your papa, and... Um, is not your mama. You know, the El Papa is because he's trying to assert the uh, uh, power of the patriarch within the family, and in fact, the whole patriarchal idea is a is a part of a hierarchical pyramid structure, which they're also trying to inculcate. So the for one thing, 
<coughs> you'll note that the people that are just out there bitching and moaning and, and flipping out over the destruction of the family are those people that come from a culture, usually some kind of a fundamentalist religious structure, that is entirely based in a hierarchical model, at the very bottom of which is an intense, um, fractally based hierarchical family structure that's a little mini pyramid that that if you go on out then supports the larger pyramid of the community where the head of the community takes the role of the father and it goes all the way up the chain to whatever your ultimate um, uh, father figure is the pope or the president or whatever my point being though is that you find that a lot of individuals like myself things change you know there's nothing you can do about things changing I'm not going to try and preserve the family I'm not going to try and conserve or alter or force or rigidify or the status quo and maintain the paradigm because things change. It is not within my nature to fight things changing. Yet there are individuals that are desperate that they not change and and I have it is my assumption or, or my conclusion at this point that, that what's motivating them is this part of their brain that has been trained to this self reinforcing series of um references to the the hierarchical model and the um, both the structure and the safety and the sh- security that that provides the individual once they've located their place within the paradigm. And there it is. Those people you find that are the great paradigm defenders have a place in the paradigm. The rest of us that can't figure out where we belong in it, we're not much for defending it. Same thing with the family. If you did not have a tr- traditional family structure, then your ability to relate to it and attempt to rigidify it for the good of the powers that be is minimalistic. Now, er, is minimal. Now, in the minimalistic uh, trend of things, we have a great change within the bottom structure of the pyramid that threatens the powers that be. And the, their power pyramid is crumbling from the bottom up in that more and more of us basically are not going to be defending the various structures that allow that pyramid to um, uh, sit and oppress us all. And that uh, many of these structures are mental uh, in, that we've all taken internally and in fact that we've been trained at great expense in, in the schooling system. Bear in mind it's a schooling system. It's not there for your education. It is to school you in how you are to behave in the presence of the powers that be uh, and behave in their the presence of their subordinates the rest of your life. So you've been schooled and you've found your place more or less in the uh, <coughs> various power pyramids, many of which we attempt to replicate within our own little structures because of the way that our minds work and they're on a fractal nature. If you really want to go in and deal with some of that component of it, you should really um, have a look at uh, Michael Tassarian on YouTube, um, especially the uh, last couple of years of his work, where he goes into the trauma and its effect on consciousness, and we're all starting to understand the fractal nature of it, because the power pyramids, it's like, why are there cliques? Why are there power cliques within any organization? Why are there inner circles and, and exclusionary zones? It's because we're trained that way from us. You don't find those, by the way, in tribal societies. I know I've lived among tribal people, and, and you may have um, uh, floating allegiances and these kind of things, but you you do not have a, a, a reinforced uh, clique-style structure within the tribal society, and we don't really see that until they are forced to deal with the power pyramid structure societies, and they start taking on some of those role models. Uh, so, but anyway, we re- self-reinforce this. We we take it down at a fractal level, and we take the larger power pyramid, and we try and replicate it where we're at, and make ourselves the top of it. And that's the whole ego grasping, all of this kind of thing. In any event, <coughs> this is what reinforces the. I mean, because our minds have been hatcheted and and uh, traumatized by everything we've gone to through, and the, because the society in which we're born into has a. Um, model uh, and a template that is trauma-inducing and trauma-supporting in order to keep us off balance, we end up with the mind structure that we have, which is very accommodating of the various methods that the powers that be offer to relieve your uh, angst and uh, uh, trauma-based fear, etc. And basically, here's what they do. Uh, they've set up a system that is going to cause you a number of levels of trauma within your brain, and then every time you're you're subjected to one of these levels of trauma, they will offer you a way to relieve that trauma, and then the organism that is you within the materium 
will say, I don't wish to suffer this emotional imbalance and this emotional pain anymore. I will accept one of these methods that they offer uh, to get out of it. Now, note, all of the methods just merely uh, get you further into their control and further into their trauma-based um, way of looking at, at life and, and this sort of thing. Now, this has led to a curious state, where, or not curious, I mean, it's a predictable even, where we have uh, basically been trained into um, cult of personality. Now, we attach cult of personality to the person that is at the top of our local power py pyramid, and we attach it to the person at the top of the ultimate power pyramid to which we are uh, hierarchically slotted. Uh, so we have a cult of personality around the president. We have a cult of personality around the speaker of the house and all of this kind of crud. All the way down to the cult of personality around the local bully. And basically that's what it is. It's a, it's a bully system that's from the ground up all the way up, reinforced, fractal, uh, reinforced at all these levels to get you to accept that, you know, someone is your better and you must, uh, kowtow as they say in Chinese. Um, this, transfer we're we're at a weird kind of a point in history at the moment where a lot of us are waking up and instead of going out and becoming violently uh I mean I went through the violent uh anger phase myself but we're not acting on it in, on moss uh but you get a you do get a violent reaction within yourself when you discover what's been done to you and you get really pissed at all these people and you want to go on out and thunk heads and you know and and kick ass that kind of thing but um in general, we're not doing that at this stage, and we're finding more and more people that are waking up and transiting through the uh, violent anger part of their grief over the loss of the illusion of the life that they had been sold. And believe me, it is grief. You're going to go through all of the, the phases of grief as you come to yourself as you go through this process. But the um, the powers that be know this is occurring. And one of their methodologies all through time has been to take advantage of this as it occurs to individuals. What I believe is happening at the moment is that it's occurring in such a large mass that they're not prepared for this, and that indeed they're going to be swamped by it, as will we all, uh, because it'll be self-reinforcing this swamping of our emotions and the freedom from the hierarchical brain model. However, you will find that a uh, certain point, the powers that be are pushing their uh, many offers of relief from for, from your angst and suffering and uh, pain. And one of them at the moment is this Thrive thing. They're out there shoveling this like mad, trying to offer this as the uh, new form of the opposition. And uh, it's bogus. It's, you know, filled with all of their kind of hierarchical models and central authority. And the Illuminati symbols are all through the whole thing. And, you know, it, it, it makes me angry to think of all the people that will be sucked into this. But that's their karma. That's their mindset. That's where they need to go. Um, but basically, it is yet another cult of personality. They just want you to, they know that your cult of personality attachment on Moss, on, on all of us, has been damaged. We're no longer attaching any the emotional uh, quantifiers that they need to our images of the president and Bernanke and all of these. When you think of them now, you primarily think of them as crooks and, and evil, rotten, uh, pedophilic um, uh, uh, whores for the cult of Rome kind of thing. So, they must come up with something else for you to attach to. So they're going to try and create a pure image in the uh, opposition, and the Thrive thing is one of these, where they're, they, they're trying to get this blend of uh, still allowing you to attach your cult of personality feelings towards somebody who's rich, and yet at the same time uh, get... They know that you're going to swing that transfer away. They want to capture it because if it swings away too far, if you go too far from their power structures with that attachment not fulfilled, it eventually will come all the way around to yourself. You will attach it to yourself as the head of your own power pyramid. You'll say, screw joining anybody else's power pyramids, and you'll go off on a issue of exploring yourself in the materium, and you're basically a sovereign individual from that point forward. And they can't have that. So they'll offer all these enticements along the way for you to attach your allegiance to such that they can fill that hole that they created in the first place with their hierarchical model and the trauma and the whole thing. So the um, thing really about the release language that I'd noticed was that indeed we've passed some kind of a threshold, something occurred. I haven't a clue as to what it actually was, whether it was simply a 
um, final number being matched in terms of, you know, the the last monkey uh, human finally got it that was necessary to start us cascading uh, across the uh, chasm as in the um, Moore's Law of uh, Adoption of Technology through an Organization. In any event, though, um, the release language is indicating that the cascade of the awakening, if you want to call it, is going to proceed, and it's going to hit all of those people that are whose minds are prepared to accept it. But uh, we're also going to start illuminating and showing a uh, number of individuals whose minds are not able to accept it. And these will be all the people who are getting uh, really rigid about defending the paradigm and becoming absolute fascists. And I think fascism, in and of itself, that mental response of thou shalt not change, nothing outside of my mind shall uh, be allowed to change, and I will express that uh, in fierce determination and beat the crap out of anybody that does try and change. That whole mindset, I think, is a mental response from the trauma that was induced into humans I don't know how long ago. And uh, the people are just don't have the emotional energy that is required for the other alternative. Because bear in mind, no matter how much emotional energy it takes to go on out and slaughter someone and kill them and um, shoot them in the head and... Uh, throw them in a ditch with hundreds of other bodies and all of this kind of stuff, that amount of mental energy is still less. That's still the coward's way out. That still the, takes less energy to do that than it does to actually do something serious like examine yourself and change. The change is all around you. It's coming through anyway. And basically, it's going to force a number of people into the extreme, which is this um, uh, rigidity of thinking that we'll end up calling fascism. Uh, I don't know that's really a, an issue as to whether they believe corporations or and government should be together or not. I just think of uh, fascism as a convenient label for that rigidity of, of thought that leads to the idea that you're going to kill people just because they're changing and you're a coward and you can't. In any event, uh, so if you're one of the people within the release that's indicated by the release language that's going to be uh, going through this um, awakening process and and joining all the others, which we're seeing is happening globally, then one thing we have to to be aware of is that there's going to be a, a propensity, a tendency already built into us to uh, uh, run around and find something to attach uh, to. The issue is we're like a um, uh, uh, negative ion that, you know, we're hanging out there and we want to go and ground ourselves to something, a positive ion somewhere, and just so that we will feel whole. And it's this lack of the feeling of wholeness that is the motivation to the attachment. Unfortunately, that attachment will lead to a lot of people into uh, cult of personality disasters as we go forward. We're seeing, uh, have always shown... Uh, lots of indications of those that as we hit the transition period we're going to see a uh, four square church kind of revival from like the 20s and 30s where the desperation of people seeking answers will create uh, gurus on moss as, as other individuals m will try and take advantage of the shift and will try and take advantage of those people going through the shift. Now let's be real clear about this. A lot of these people that are gurus are in and of themselves as traumatized as you, and a lot of them uh, will fall into the category of those people who don't want to change, the, the rigid rigid mindset, fascist kind of thinking. And they're just out there to uh, basically uh, shear the sheep. Uh, they just see it as an opportunity. They're cynical. Uh, you'll find that these people are uh, sexual predators. Uh, they're monetarily focused. They never want to uh, give away anything, never want to tell you anything. They always lead you up to the next point where you're supposed to pay more money. Uh, basically, they follow the Scientology model of religion, which is if you pay me enough, maybe I'll tell you that you're a space alien. Um, in any event... A lot of those individuals are going to show up now. Now, an, another category of the guru is not necessarily within that fascist uh, mindset of shear the sheep. These kind of people may actually know something, and they might be uh, legitimately uh, community-oriented. Doesn't mean, though, that they're not as deluded as you are. Doesn't mean they really know what, they're, what they think that they know. Uh, so... Uh, but And they're going to cause a lot of problems in and of themselves because there will be a great many of those guys that think they know something and they don't really. 
um, this is what I what I go towards ag- again in the whole idea of this towards a movement of the a life of unknowing because that's what we've got to do. We've got to live a life of unknowing. Anybody that comes along and claims that they know something merely has attached a particular level of emotional um, energy to a fact of the moment, and that is their problem. They're not recognizing that it is an of-the-moment issue, and they're seeing it as the final, the ultimate, the penultimate, the the absolute maximal solution for everything of all time uh, and all problems forever, and here I've got it. Now, a lot of these gurus actually believe that, and so they're probably even more dangerous in my mind than the uh, cynical um, uh, shear the sheep bastards. So in, in my way of thinking, I would much rather deal with um, um, uh, the papa pretender um, uh, rat zinger, uh, pedophile master and deceiver master, who is flat out a deceiver master and a pedophile and doesn't make any real bones about it, then I would deal with someone who believes themselves uh, to be an awakened Christ. Uh, the latter guy, you you just either got to have to shun them, put them off somewhere until they come to their senses and go to that next stage of evolution and realize that, oh yeah, uh, oh yeah, I'm Christ, but duh, or, uh, we're all Christ and so it's not really a special thing and I better stop annoying people. Um, so, so we're going to have a lot of those kind of cult of personality things that we've got to go through. And, and just a, a heads up that they're going to be everywhere. And unfortunately, my problem is I keep running a foul of the followers uh, rather than the leaders. The leaders you can just uh, bitch slap and they'll get out of your way because basically they're a bully or their minds are trapped in this idea of attachment to a particular idea of knowing as the ultimate source and solution for all problems. The followers are more dangerous because they're uh, trapped in a a uh, really sticky a point of attachment to the cult of personality uh, that fills that point in their brain. Now, there's the difference between the two. The uh, guru at the head of their little power pyramid, as I say, uh, you can walk on up and bitch slap them and you're dealing with them peer-to-peer and so on. Now, the follower will not allow their mindset to understand what is occurring and they will kill anything that destroys their uh, um, uh, perception of reality, which is that they've found their slot to their guru who actually is the enlightened Christ or whatever, right? And so the followers are always a lot more dangerous than the the guy at the top. Uh, and we need to discourage as much of this following crap as we possibly can. The reason that we need to is because the powers that be know this and they take advantage of it and they direct it, they use that energy, eat it up and nothing ever changes. This time is going to be a little different, I think. Simply because of the way the release language is laying out, I think that they won't be able to eat up all of the energy that's coming out, and they're going to be subsumed in it. That's why I'm trying to come up with metaphors, you know, surfing the shock wave, uh, that kind of thing, because it's going to be a really interesting time. And I don't know that I, I don't know that I've ever lived in such a time in my life. I, I keep doing uh, analysis backwards in time as they add more and more newspapers. Uh, to the uh, various um, uh, archives on online, and and I have yet to find a situation that's analogous to what we're going through at the moment. Doesn't mean it's not there because I don't have a whole lot of time to to devote to that. But it, it is interesting that I haven't found anything even reasonably close. Now at the moment, um, we're getting into a state of serious flux, and so let's examine this. Uh, you get a news story. The news story is, um, uh, let's take one that's current. Um, you know, uh, white bastard shoots young um, uh, black teenager, uh, kills him. Now, you can't trust the headline, can't trust the story, and it's going to be a question of, do you have an emotional attachment? Do you wish to form an emotional attachment to any of the characters in the story? Are the, and then you also have to stop and you have to examine and ask, is this story being proffered to me by mainstream media, a.k.a. the propaganda bitch press, uh, to try and get me to attach my attachment to something so that I can be motivated to do something that, that the powers that be want me to do? That's the first thing you should always ask yourself is, why is this story being presented? In a life of unknowing, you want to unknow. You don't want to believe. You don't want to have an attachment to anybody's proffered set of facts because those facts are transitory. And you will discover that the transitory nature of facts will become increasingly clear as we go forward into June where you just can't know for sure. And we see this now now, 
at a higher level of the pyramid, and it's floating all the way down to us, or maybe it's percolating up, I don't know. But we're seeing it in the testimony of the uh, great crooks exonerating themselves before the uh, the crook fest, a.k.a. the Congress, where they get up there and say, no, you can't really know where money is. I mean, the Corazine MF Global thing, you know, it's the, it's a, it's here, and, and when I looked there, and somebody had already moved it, and you can't find it, and so on. And it's like, um, basically, he's claiming, I can't know anything because of the uh, flood of information. Now, that is legitimate. That's a legitimate claim. He's, he's using it as an excuse to cover his tracks on the theft of uh, tens of millions of dollars, or hundreds of millions, or billions or trillions, um, because we can't know, and we'll never know, and he'll get away with it uh, until he doesn't. And then he'll know right up to the moment that he's uh, that he's, he's he'll, basically he'll be walking along thinking I've gotten away with it I've gotten away with it I know I've gotten away with it and he'll run right smack into the great wall of unknowing when he realizes oh crud and and all of a sudden has an unknowing episode and then he'll realize that everything that's set up there is a level of unknowing in there and we will all unknow his known excuses and he will indeed have to suffer the consequences of his action the problem with the the knowledge is the sources change and conclusions are erroneous if the context is itself flawed many of the quote researchers do not recognize this and so they're out and about uh, running around making great connections between A, B, C to J, uh, Q, R out to W, N, Z. And they don't understand that that their context in which that is being placed uh, doesn't include punctuation, doesn't include foreign alphabets, and so on. So their context is limited, so therefore their conclusions are limited. Their issues, and all of our issues, are that they will be part of the whole uh, COP issue, the the training for the cult of personality. And people uh, will be in a great period of unknowing, not being able to live with the unknowing because they don't know that this is possible. No one's told them that you can do this, that uh, you can actually say, I don't believe, I don't know, and it doesn't really matter much at the moment, <laughs> as I'll get around to in a second. But <clears throat> So you'll find people that will attach themselves, for instance, to David Wilcock. And so, you know, woe to the person that says that, you know, David Wilcock is, you know, always thin or, you know, or, or um, oh, he's too blonde for me, you know, whatever is your particular issue with him. Um, because you'll run into the followers issue as they try and defend their personal paradigm because everything else is breaking down around them and they need to defend something just so that they can feel that they have something solid to stand on. And at last, and in spite of all of these many minutes that I've asked you to invest your time in this, we've come to the point of it, which is the absence of solidity. Now, I know from my particular viewpoint of reality that uh, there is no solidity, that solidity is as great an illusion as anything else, and that we live in a, an environment that is entirely energy, and therefore there are no solids, and even the whole concept of solidity is a, an illusion within our brains. But many people will seek solidity, even if it is only one small point of it. In the, and many other people will exhibit this um, uh, manifestation for needing something solid to stand on, and will uh, probably adhere and, and willingly throw their attachment towards fascism. Now, the powers that be are counting on that. I don't think they're going to get quite as many people as they thought for a number of different reasons that I won't go into at the moment because we've used up way too much of your time as it is to get around to this particular point. But here's the point. We have to sort of think of ourselves uh, like the peasants in the uh, period of time between the um, alleged year 900 AD and, say, the alleged year 1300s. So in the end of the, quote, Dark Ages and into the early part of the Renaissance, peasants weren't allowed to leave the land. And you, if you were a peasant, which most of us would have been in that period of time, we would have spent, you know, uh, our lives within, say, a 20 or 30 mile radius of the area we'd been born. And we would belong to the lords and so on. Now, all of that is still true. We all st we still belong to the lords and, and this kind of thing. But basically what I'm getting around to is that the peasant knew his local environment with certainty. And beyond that, he didn't know anything at all, and everything else fell within the realm of imagination because they did not have the ability to convey certainty to him in the sense of photographs that might have shown him uh, what the Eiffel Tower uh, or would have looked like or a mountain or something in a far distant land or the Mediterranean um, sea, something along these lines. They did not exist. The 
photographic evidence at the time, had it existed, would have been uh, taken beyond being magical with some level of certainty. And he would have thus have been able to apply certainty or knowability to an external object that was outside of his locality. This is getting a little really complex to say a simple thing, but here's why. We are basically still peasants. We've come full circle, and we've destroyed our ability to attach certainty to anything outside our locality. How have we destroyed that? By a plethora of too many and too uncertain themselves sources. We now know that any photograph, any birth certificate can be faked. We also know that, you know, uh, they're so damn stupid that they do it badly. But and we can catch them at it. And thus, we know that other things can be faked. We know conspiracies are, ex- are true and they exist. So even though we now have global access and we can reach entirely around the planet, basically, to pick up, quote, facts from anywhere, we've also increased our level of uncertainty about those facts as we go forward. This, I think, is an effect of the information transition that we're in. And I'm formulating theories and crap about that, but that's probably my monkey mind just uh, going crazy because of too much rain up here. Uh, I'm in the Pacific Northwest of America, and we've had a very miserable winter, and we're in yet another uh, winter rainstorm at the moment. And it leads to these kinds of thinking, these these long, uh, what we call experiences with the tunnel. But so here, here's what we've got. We're in the 21st century, and this is going to be the century for a brief period of time, I think, maybe the rest of this decade, of the great unknowing, where we're going to have a, a huge conflict between any proffered fact and your ability to debunk it. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's somebody's birth date, their height, or anything. You can probably find, if you're not right there with them, some place online that you can debunk that particular fact that's being proffered. Ergo, there are no facts anymore, uh, at least in the way of the solidity that we used to associate with facts within the materium. This is a huge change, I think. And, and I'm going to be thinking about this over the next few days. Because as we go forward with this idea of no solidity anywhere within our information, it's going to demand a different kind of thinking. Now, my particular bent at the moment is I want people to watch out for uh, this cult of personality stuff because I don't like dealing with followers because they always cause me grief and I get into fights with them because usually I'm insulting their um, the object of their following. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. I mean, the fact that I bring it on myself. Uh, in any event... Um, so, anybody comes along and says to you, I claim this, I know this, uh, basically you can just instantly dismiss it. Yeah, you think you know that, yeah, you think you're claiming that, but you don't really know, and you can't really claim that, and if you have a conclusion about a set of facts, I can give you an alternate set of facts that will throw your conclusion into doubt. Now, I'm an old guy here on a personal level, and I just don't have the energy to start getting into debunking anybody or that kind of stuff anymore, and I'm hopefully people will just sort of calm down and stop doing that. Uh, but it's going to be really interesting, and this may be part of the whole release language process that we're going to go through over this next, you know, 10, 15 years uh, until we can, if we ever get back into any other kind of language. And this may be what release language is all about. So just to recap real quick uh, and finish up, um, We're trained from birth to uh, have a hierarchical model and want to attach emotions to our leaders. Men especially have been reinforced in this. We're at a period of transferring of those attachments as the empire of uh, uh, rigid thought around us breaks down. A lot of people won't want to transfer. They're going to become even more rigid. Watch out for these guys. And um, if you see them, I would advise you do not contend because they cannot stop contending once they begin. That's the whole nature of fascism doesn't wise up until it dies. Um, if you are in, trapped in the and you recognize that your attachments are transferring, try and w- watch out for the cult of personality. If you wait long enough and keep that hole open, it'll eventually come around and, ho- and seal itself by um, fixing on yourself, which is not a bad thing because you are your own leader. Um, so, uh, you know, no attachment to the opinion of others is probably the best way to go. Everything's in a state of flux. And uh, basically, it's, you know, if you meet the guru along the, the road, you're really lucky that he's not, you're not meeting one of his followers. First thing you ought to do is bitch slap the guy and tell him to get out of your way and then proceed. Uh, so now, um, also, this could start uh, affecting the researchers and that kind of thing. So personally, if a lot of the researchers are going to just sit there and catalog giant levels of facts, I'm going to have to disregard it because the facts are things of the moment and they don't know the sources. They can't know the sources. Their level of uncertainty is so huge, it's not worth wasting my time on it. 
And that brings us to the end of this and then the last bit of discussion, which is time. Uh, money is no longer valuable. Uh, we see money, currency fading away. Uh, we're moving into the calorie economy. As an intrinsic component of the calorie economy, we're looking at at energy. So the things that give you personal physical energy to get up and motivate yourself off the couch to get something done are valuable. Uh, anything else is not. But a subset of that energy is the emotional energy that you have as well as the amount of time available to, let's put this in quotes, invest your energy. I don't like using that term, but I'll, and I'll come up with something else. But your investment of energy into anything, uh, emotional or physical energy, within the framework of time is the ultimate commodity. So, just a word of caution. Watch out for us time wasters, myself included. And uh, probably the worst combination of all would be time wasters that were juxtaposed with um, uh, gurus running around saying, I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing, follow me, follow me. Probably they don't. Thank you much, and we'll try and be briefer next time.